calling the Sunday School Committee meeting to order uh, October 17th at uh, 530. So we have uh, the minutes of a special meeting. Get a, a motion to approve. We get two sets of minutes, right? The special meeting and the... Uh, so you had one, oh, yeah. <clears throat> and the, that's right, the March 18th and the regular minutes from the last meeting. March 28th, uh, June 18th. So. My guess for simplicity, I'd break it up just because you have Separate separate one. You have different yeah. membership. Right. Fair enough. Well, start with the June 18th, the most recent one. Move to approve the minutes for June 18th. Um, I had a question about the June 18th What's minutes. My notes about the Union 38 representatives and the reorganization don't match these minutes. Okay. And that might be a problem with my notes. What have you got? Um, well, I wrote Peter, Jessica, Greg, and then I scribbled out Greg, so mine are incomplete. And the notes say uh, Greg, Maisie, and Peter. What are we talking about? Which is fine about? with me, sorry. Um, oh, we're on the minutes, section. Oh, okay. Um, this is for Union 38 reps? Yeah. I'm fine with what it says in here. What does it as say? As long as everybody's in agreement on it. What does it say in what was sent out to us? It says matches, Greg, Maisie, and the minutes. Peter. Yeah, matches okay. the minutes. I don't know if that's what I wrote down. I, I have that Union reps is Greg, Peter, and Jessica. Yeah. Ah, then that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Okay. Good call. So, um, do we need a motion or do we just make a correction and then a move is corrected? Uh, let's see. We haven't had a motion yet to move it, so keep, we keep can just make a motion to move it as with a correction. So the correction is that instead of Dr. Shaw for a Unit 38 rep, it should be Jessica. So you want to move as corrected then? Move as corrected. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then a separate motion for the uh, March 28th. Uh, move to approve March 28th meeting. Minutes. And I'll get second. I wasn't there. No. Jessica wasn't on the committee. Right. But mm. we can still have a vote, I think. It's just only two of you can vote, and that's still good enough. All right. I assume. I assume. <coughs> yep. All right. All in favor? Aye. Approved. Technically, you can even vote for minutes you're not at, as long as you believe it's going to be true. Fair enough. So it's 202, <laughs> I assume. Yep. All right. Okay. And now the, the financial warrants. Yes. So I left the warrant packet on the table. Uh, there are eight warrants totaling $66,028.37, of which one warrant is for FY19 encumbrances. Uh, so thank you for signing those. Um, regarding FY19, uh, we've done, gone through the closeout process with Sunderland. Uh, the encumbrances being carried forward are just under 50000 and uh, to note the school choice rollover funds of $94,162. That's a good rollover for you for going into 20. Um, and I'm currently working on the DESI end of year report where we may identify some things that need to get moved around, but it, it likely will not be significant changes to anything. Um, so FY20, uh, the expenditure report is attached for you there to review. There's not a whole lot to report right now. Um, there's primarily been salary expenditures at this point, some expenses, but nothing um, stands out as problematic at this point. Uh, the school choice funding per the final cherry sheet is $323,501. Um, and then I am currently working on going through the budget document that was created by TMS. Um, I have met with Ben. I am going through with a fine tooth comb 
to make sure that all the formulas are in place and everything is linked. Um, Sunderland particularly had some things that needed to be corrected. I did note that here on the report that there were some expenditure and budgetary changes. Um, one of which was school committee legal fees were omitted from the budget line. Uh, so I went ahead and moved some funds to cover that from clerical wages as there was some overstatement of hours and a rate of pay in the clerical wage line. So we were able to move some funds there. Uh, additionally, the trash line in the original budget was understated by $5,160. This is primarily because our um, trash vendor changed in Sunderland, uh, so there was some unforeseen expenses there. Fortunately, we did have um, an early childhood teacher who was replaced whose step was lower than the um, person who was previously in place when the budget was built. Uh, so we were able, again, to transfer some funds into that line to cover that expense. Uh, there have been some other staffing changes. Uh, as a result, uh, that was um, gives Sunderland a savings of just over $13,000, and that will be available for us to cover unforeseen expenditures throughout the year um, and be in conversation with Ben's, Ben about how those funds might need to be used. Uh, two other items to note, one is the SPED IDEA grant, uh, which is a federal grant. Uh, the expenditures for that were budgeted at 77000 The IDEA grant came in uh, low, just over 54000 uh, so it leaves us with a deficit in that line, which primarily covers salaries of $23,014. I have been in conversation with Karen about that, our special education director, uh, and she does believe that there will be funding to cover this through either this grant moving some things around because it is an umbrella grant that then gets broken out to the schools um, or through other uh, SPED funding sources. So we don't believe that the local budget will have to um, absorb that deficit. Uh, and the final item to note that I'm keeping a really close eye on and in communication with the early childhood coordinator is that the enrollment for early childhood is lower than anticipated. Uh, had been speaking with the previous director, Kim McCarthy, as well as the new director, Amy, uh, and we're five children under enrolled in that program right now. Uh, so it's approximately a $20,000 deficit. Uh, fortunately, they do have a healthy rollover for the early childhood account, so it will fund that deficit for this year, and if we do enroll five more kids, um, if they are uh, full pay, that will be of significant value for us. Um, but if not, we will have the rollover, and then we're going to have to look a little bit closer at that program moving forward. Those are the things I'm keeping an eye on right now. Yeah. Um, the expenditure report that we've been getting prior to this also included um, the uh, school choice uh, expenditure report okay. and budget, you know, how that, there was basically one <coughs> page on school choice, yep. there was one page on uh, the early childhood program, and there was one page on, I think, a sped, uh, I can't remember the proper terminology, but the ones that the, the first two are the ones I'm particularly interested in, um, because that you know that's part of our budgeting too, and uh, um, so. Okay, I'll be happy to include those for you. Okay, and if there was a way of just you know emailing a couple, you know, particularly the the school choice and the early childhood ones um, that would correspond with this, then I could have them all together. It would be great. Okay, I'll do my best on that. We're that still may be, working. I, 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 if it's a problem, forget about it. We'll just get it the next time. It's not a problem. Okay. It's just we're still working to roll over all of those revolving funds to okay. the new year still. Okay. So at this point, I could give it to you, and it wouldn't have the budget line, right. um, but it would have the expenditures that came out of it. But I'll work on it, and we'll okay. see if we can get it out ASAP to be and for included. The, and for the school choice account, I think there was some funds added at the end of the year because <laughs> that was a way of... Uh, retaining them for future use and I was wondering if any of that actually had been spent during the summer for stuff that needed to be done like for you know shelving and stuff like that was any of that money taken out of school choice that was for any of your funds that oh is that yeah <laughs> and, and so I, I'm sort of right. I don't want to lose I don't need to address it now but I don't want to lose 
track of that stuff because so the ninety four thousand would be what is prior to anything spent this summer right and there was the project of uh you moved the art room right? yeah my son my assumption yep. is some of that was spent yes, so again works. i just i want to make sure that throughout the year we have good visibility for that program Absolutely. because it's real important Understood. and we got burned a couple of times and so it's like okay now we look extra careful yeah. thank you you're welcome <clears throat> any other questions just a, a jargon question. You said uh, you're rolling over 50k encumbrances, right? And that means um, so it'll be posted as a liability. It really doesn't mean anything in regards to the financials. It, I, I just wanted you to be aware of bills yeah. that weren't paid at the end of FY19 that we have to pay in 20. But um, again, it's not out of 20 funds. It just shows up as a liability in 20. Thank you. You're welcome. Actually, I have one other jargon thing. Just to make sure we're being consistent. Um, when we say early childhood here, is that always only preschool? Does that ever, is that term ever used to include kindergarten? Yes, but not from, no. not from like a financial okay. standpoint, okay. right? So Shelly's referring to the preschool programs, which are tuition based, right. whereas the kindergarten is not. Okay. But when we talk right. about early childhood, yeah, it's... Early childhood okay. coordinator oversees more than just... Uh, right. School. Okay, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> That's a good, actually a good question. Yeah. yeah. And you from context that meant preschool. Yeah. Sure. All right. <clears throat> Any uh, public comment? Apparently not. Uh, and we have no scheduled uh, unfinished business or discussion items or votes. That brings to new business. The MASC MASS Joint Annual Conference Official Delegate. Is anyone going? It's still conceivable I might go, but the fact is that when I went, because I had mixed feelings about last year as to whether it was worth it or not, right. and it was marginally worth it but the one thing that clearly was not worth it was the joint and the official joint annual conference part mm -hmm. the thing on friday afternoon where you need to be an official delegate and that was just a horrendous waste of time okay so that if i go again i would want to for sure not be the official delegate so i would feel no compunction to go to that thing. Sure. so i think we just pass on it because it really was worthless yeah i can't go Fair enough. Well, I was thinking about it, but not now. <laughs> no, the rest is fine. You, got, you go to some interesting interesting <laughs> seminars and so on, and it's just... Just don't be the official delegate. Yeah. Is that worth it? But going to the damn, con you know, whatever, the official business part. No. We'll have somebody from the district there. Yeah. The greater district. Yeah. Represent all our right. school committee needs. Yeah. <laughs> Me. All right, uh, safe school grant, safe schools grant. Yep, so, um, Ben, did you have that as part of your report too? I did not. All right, so the, um, we received, you know, I sent you all an email in June, but I just kind of wanted to put it out there publicly again. Um, we received a safe schools grant. This is a non-matching grant, so it's, you know, we don't have to come up with any funds to match it or do anything. Um, in that manner, but basically, um, Sunderland received thirty-five thousand dollars to upgrade um, the security and safety of this building. And so, um, with that, we will um, will be gearing toward updating um, <coughs> cameras and um, entry systems, and going to a key fob system, which um, is a nice thing to have because we this building is used more than just for schools. Um, schooling, I guess it's used for you know athletics, uh, uh, well, athletics, uh, recreation, and that kind of thing. So when you have different groups coming and going, you can hand out keys. If you don't get them back, you can shut them down and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, I mean overall, um, you know, as you can see in front of you, we received quite a bit of money um, for that. And so I really want to thank um, Scott Paul, who did the, the lion's share of the grant writing on that. The principals who had to you know put the input into. Um, the different parts that needed to be done and then also the law enforcement each one each town police department had a sign off on it and i know <clears throat> um, that there was some also the chiefs put some plugs in for our towns to get this money as well as through their political connections or i don't know how exactly that works but i know they were active because they were saying they were talking about it 
um, with their different groups. So just you know, really, it's great that we're able to get some outside money to do this. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. And and the cameras are already in. Or? Yeah, the cameras are already in now. Um, depending on the need for each entry, um, the the cost can be um, up and down a little bit. And and part of the issue that we've had with the doors at Sunderland is the hardware and doors not closing properly. So this grant will fix that and just the overall structure of each, each opening, which should be good. I think we identified not a total of nine um, spots in the building that could be used for the uh, key fob. We did a walkthrough at the end of the summer. And I think that the door hardware is why someone I believe received more money. Yes. Because it was yep. too in order to get the right. doors up to, I don't want to say the code, because they're code right now right. by, you know, whatever, but the, the code of Functioning more properly. Functioning more properly. Yes. When do you anticipate <laughs> uh, the project being completed? We was have to spend the money by, by December, December 1st or file yeah. an extension. So it's going to happen this fall. Okay, good. Yeah. <clears throat> what else? All right, we've got a, a contract assigned with the instructional assistant. So, yeah, so, well, I would suggest putting that at the end because okay. we can go in executive session and discuss the contract so if there's any questions because technically it's still being negotiated yep. until. Um, you do it, but you're going to have to come out of executive session to vote the contract. Okay. okay. Um, and that is the, just for people watching sake, but that, or for the understanding part's sake, is that you're going to sign off on the, <coughs> I got to get the right term here, because I feel like a memory here. You're going to sign off of the, on the, um, the settlement agreement, and then the official contract will be written up and it'll be signed off by the chairs. Okay, so you know this is the basic the overview of you know the compensation package and any major language changes that affect that kind of thing. So um, that kind of thing. There. So I mean, I would suggest just if you want to just shift it to the end, and we can sure. do, we can do the both exec the other executive sessions approval of the minutes of previous executive sessions. So if you do it at the end, it would make my okay. more so. Fair enough. All right. In that case, uh, policy KHC. So you received uh, let me, policy KHC, um, dissemination of information. So basically um, what we'd like to do here is update our policy. This is a, um, a policy that's common in many, many schools um, in the sense that we're no longer, right now, outside organizations, nonprofits can bring in handouts, get approved and have them distributed by each classroom, push them back, backs and send them. <coughs> Um, we want to end the distribution of paper flyers and have everything go digital, um, be part of the school's principal's report going home and then put at the end, you know, with, still with approval to make sure they're appropriate for um, school age and we're not just advertising pizza or whatnot. Um, there, the language in here gives a lot of leeway to the superintendent and the principal, so it doesn't it's not affecting PTO. So if PTO or a school organization wants to do something, we can still send paper flyers home if we have to really get the word out. If there was other community things that we felt it was important that the paper flyers go home or some sort of handout go home, we can um, we can modify it to such. But it's just in, in general, you know, if there's a new you know, uh, dance class or that kind of things. Those things could be all, instead of different, different flyers going on, they're all in one place. And so one could even argue that it communicates more thoroughly and that things aren't getting lost in backpacks and parents saying, I never got that and, you know, that kind of thing. And they know they go to one spot to get all those announcements. So that's, in essence, so this is the reading of the of the policy where we do a reading first and then we vote on the following one. So if you, have any, if you have any, Deep questions on that, or you want to get me between the next meeting? We can. <coughs> um, reading simple questions, you have to be deep. Nice. <clears throat> Should I go right to the other one? Yeah, let's go right to the, the next one. IMGA, the dissection and dissection alternatives. Um, as you know, we try to keep our policies consistent all the way from um, the regional school down to the elementary. But there's not a lot of dissection, but you could possibly could have that in fifth and sixth grade or something of that. But basically, it is a practice that we have been doing. We never had a policy. Um, somebody ran into something where it says, you know, we really should make sure we have a policy in case ever, um, issues ever came of it. But you, um, the idea is to have alternatives to that, um, to the, I guess the old, I wouldn't say the old dissection ways of 
cutting open the frog and that kind of thing there. And currently that's, the practice is being done, but we want to make sure we have a policy to back up. You have a lot of dissection happening, Ben? On the one, two playground on occasion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unauthorized dissection of a worm or something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but not in the classroom. <laughs> so again, a reading on that, we'll vote next time. No, it's So we're not sending one to officially to MASC, and it looks like then uh, we will just go to the reports and then do executive session at the very end. That's what I recommend. Capital projects. <coughs> um, capital projects. I've got a couple things to report. Uh, one is, uh, and I guess I sent this out to, to Darius and to Ben, but I hadn't sent it to the committee because maybe I was feeling nervous about open meeting laws and so on, even though I think I can just send stuff out that is just information without, you know, in, in, without encouraging any discussion. It's discussion or yeah. deliberation that are not allowed, but in the future I'll send them out just overall and just say, okay, but no, no discussion. Um, there were two meetings of the Capital Planning Committee over the summer, and uh, both dealing with the ADA issues that we had uh, been talking about a bit at the end of the last school year. Um, at the first meeting, uh, it was... Uh, we went through the whole list of projects for the various town buildings, which obviously includes the school. Um, and there, you know, the largest uh, project, or the most expensive project, uh, as far as the school here was concerned, was uh, for the uh, early childhood kinder, early childhood playground. Um, and then there were less expensive items dealing with, in particular, bathroom. Uh, modifications and things like that, or certain door modifications and so on. Um, and then there were obviously, uh, uh, you know, issues of some possibly substantial cost other places in town. And we went through the various things, and there wasn't a whole lot of support for the early childhood playground. Um, and so we sort of ended the first meeting by saying, well, and there was some stuff like at the highway garage where they just decided it was going to be so expensive to make it. Uh, fully accessible that they would then schedule any meetings that were needed up at town town offices and you would deal with it that way. Um, then we had, so they were going to cost out the very things we were left with, which was sort of a hodgepodge of bathroom fixes and stuff like that. Well, came in the next meeting and lo and behold, um, and not that I, there was no deliberation outside the meeting, but uh, there was a suggestion that, gee, what we were uh, sort of looking at was not very exciting, uh, not very, not the kind of thing that was going to get a grant necessarily awarded to you. And if it did get a grant awarded to you, it seemed like the way that this whole grant thing for PDA <coughs> stuff works is if you get a grant one year, you don't, you're not eligible for getting a grant the next year. So it was then proposed that we needed something, uh, basically the term that Rock Warner used was a little more sexy, okay, than fixing up sort of a few toilets or something. So um, at that point, there was like, well, what's, you know, what's in here that's sexy? And it became pretty clear, basically for the whole committee, that the only thing that was sexy on the, on, you know, in the whole ADA report was the early childhood play playground, okay? Now, obviously, we weren't ready this time to do a, a grant request for that because we don't have uh, the funding lined up. Okay, and we don't really have, we got a budget for the whole thing, you know, if we, if we, if we contract everything out, but that's not the way this thing is going to get done, because a bunch of stuff is going to get, a bunch of stuff has to be contracted out because it's too complicated for the locals to do, but, you know, as with the other playground or playgrounds in other towns, a bunch of work will get done, you know, hopefully by, you know, volunteers in town and some particular volunteers who have some serious equipment that can help, you know, dig holes or do whatever, move stuff or whatever has to be done. So that uh, it then seemed that uh, the plan that we basically agreed on was that we're going to do no grant application this year, that the uh, early childhood playground be the uh, project for the next grant round, which has to be submitted uh, by late summer, okay, and then would have to be spent by the following June 30th, and I'm sure we could get a month extension for spending it or something like that, because you've got to do that work in the summer. Um, and in order to be ready for that, to have our, you know, everything set for that 
grant application, uh, we need you know, a whole financial plan, meaning what are we actually going to spend? Right. Okay, so we got to take the, the, the design from Berkshire Design and then, um, you know, see what we would, you know, if we don't contract out everything, what can we, how much lower price can we bring the thing in for? And then on the, on the you know, revenue side, where are we going to get the rest of the money from? Okay, now I don't know what, you know, and the one thing that would have been talked about for the grant, for that playground, was the pouring of this special uh, ADA compliance surface, okay, over the whole area, which is number one, uh, quite expensive, something I don't know exactly what was, was uh, uh, Berkshire Design said, but something in the range of fifty to 100,000. Mm -hmm. um, and it can't be done by just, you know, weekend volunteers or something like that. So that would be, a, you know, that's sort of the big first thing that we, you know, we got to get that lined up. And if the grant could do that, that would be terrific. But we got to get the rest of the package in place. Um, I went to one meeting that I got invited to that Ben had here at the school probably back in January or something like that with, uh, uh, you know, six or eight, ten people from town, from different parts of town. And uh, there was discussion of the project and, and uh, one of the folks there was John Sackery, I believe, that, uh, you know, had some very, uh, you know, he's got experience in this sort of stuff and he had ideas about, okay, where we can, you know, what we can do ourselves, how much we could cut the project down, so on and so forth. Um, I guess what I'm saying is we need to rev that whole process up and, and I would suggest that um, I, I don't think we need to get in tonight, uh, but I think that we need to, you know, I would almost like to see it on our agenda for every meeting, you know, status of early childhood playground, um, you know, developing of a revenue, you know, the necessary revenues and developing a expense budget. Because if we don't give it, you know, keep it in front of us, it's just the old visibility thing. We don't keep it in front of us, we're going to turn around, you know, budget time's going to come to be worried about the you know, the overall budget for the year, and this thing, and we're going to get behind it. All of a sudden, oh, Christ, we got a month or two to put this together, okay? And um, some of the, you know, the funding is going to be a challenge, but I think there, there are ways to uh, deal with that. And um, uh, so, anyway, I, that's why, you know, it, you know, in your talks for, for, you know, future meetings or something like that, it would, I think, useful just to have it there, you know, and so on, and then maybe... You know, the next time we can talk about, okay, you know, at least a sort of plan of action to how to address both the revenue side and the expenditure side so that we start uh, moving forward because then also part of my role is to be able to go back to Capital Planning Committee and keep reporting regularly, okay, here's how, you know, here's how it, what we got done, here's how we're moving forward, or maybe even here's what we need some help with or stuff like that. So um, I don't want it to just like, okay, we'll work on it and come back in six months and tell us what you've come up with. Okay, so that's that's that. Um, the other thing I want to report on was not strictly capital planning committee, but um, I sort of see that role as generally sort of one of keeping in communication with the powers that be at town hall, mm -hmm. in particular selectmen and finance. And um, uh, so I've gone to, you know, I, mean, I go to their meetings, <laughs> uh, you know, from time to time if I see something interesting. And I went to the selectmen meeting last uh, Monday, eight days ago because they had an item on there uh, about the new development at the south end of town. Sugar, I mean, the original name was Sugarbush Meadows or something like that. Uh, I don't know what the current name is. Uh, and they were coming to the selectmen to see if they were interested in hooking up their sewer operation to the town and so on. Well, that's a discussion that's not, you know, that's not nothing to do with what I want to say here. What I do want to say here is I then uh, there were these two guys, and they were part of, uh, you know, running the operation for the building of this thing. But once it was built, you know, then they were, they'd done their job, and they were involved in running it. But I, I, they, they left the meeting, the meeting, they were the selectmen meeting for maybe 30, 40 minutes, something like that. And they left the meeting, <coughs> and I followed them out and said, you know, could I talk to you for a moment or something like that? Introduced myself to myself on the school committee, and wanted, and basically asked, because I haven't been paying much attention to this and didn't know really what we're looking at here in terms of, you know, how it might affect the school. And so we talked for probably half an hour and uh, I just pass on a little bit here and then it's going to be something I also want to get regularly on the agenda because it's important, okay? It's important but it's also going to be stuff that's going to be difficult to deal with, 
because they are looking at uh, construction finishing uh, this coming summer, which is 10 months or something like that, with you know, hopefully full occupancy by the time uh, the school year starts at UMass. Uh, the place has got 150 units, uh, split between one and two bedroom. Uh, the, the rule is that they got this whole comprehensive state permit to do this sort of thing uh, by saying that 25 percent of the units will be uh, for you know, affordable housing. Okay? Now, the thing that I heard at the, these two guys say, which I would like to sort of get confirmed, but uh, they said that UMass students sort of by definition do not qualify for the affordable housing part. Okay, so it's sort of like there's going to be three quarters of this project is mostly UMass students, and then a quarter is going to be people that meet the rules for a, affordable housing, meaning, you know, based on your family size, what your income is, so on. And um, Lord knows how many kids they might have, but 25% of 150 units is 37, 38 units. Okay, and even if you got one kid a unit average, Okay, that's, you know, in the elementary school, now maybe they'll go, you know, who knows how much, you know, it's a problem also for Frontier, but it's less of a problem for Frontier because it's a much, could be a much smaller amount. And also, you know, anyway, suppose we got 30 kids going to the elementary school, okay, and now you think about, well, you know, what's that going to cost us? I mean, is it going to mean another school bus? It's going to mean, is it going to mean, it's certainly going to mean each kid, I did a little math, and each kid you add, if you just add a kid, okay, to, you know, if you, add, if you add 30 kids to our enrollment here, okay, you add about something like 25 or 30,000 to our share of the central office costs, just right off the bat. You know, it's not for anything more that's being done, it's just we have to pay a higher percentage of central office costs, okay? Then it's a question of how do they come in? Do they come in so we can absorb them in our classes? Do they come in so that we have to, you know, Lord help us if we have to start a new section or a new classroom, okay, or do they, in some cases, we're over our, you know, what we strive for maximum capacity and then, okay, the way we deal with it is we have to hire another aid. I mean, this could get quite expensive. Now, from the town's point of view, uh, they will also be bringing in income because it'll add to the tax roll, okay, and there will be a substantial number there, so it's not as if the town's resources aren't going to grow some, okay, but we're going to be putting a budget together in January, February, March, voting on it in April, and we don't know how many kids are going to come because the people have, won't even have, you know, signed the leases. So we're going to have to come up with a way, and I think the only way we're going to do this is with, you know, a joint effort with real good communication between us, finance, select board, okay, about how we're going to deal with possible scenarios, okay, and because we can't do something that says, okay, we're going to wait and see how many show up and then we'll schedule a special town meeting and then we'll appropriate whatever more money is needed, okay, because that probably wouldn't happen until October. You know, you probably wouldn't have the money available to December, you know, November, December or something like that. And so you can't do business that way. So I think there's, I mean, I, I got a conception of how this can work, okay. I'm just saying it's something that we're going to have to work on jointly figuring out you know, what, you know, looking at some possible scenarios and understanding how we're going to deal with the financing of these scenarios in a way that maintains the program the way we want to maintain the program. <coughs> okay, and um, I'll just, so that's pretty much where that is, okay? It's not, you know, it wasn't brought up at the selectmen's meeting, okay? But we're going to have to make sure that there, when, when we go through the whole budget process, that there's this, you know, they talk about the elephant in the room. I mean, this is the elephant in the room that we don't have a handle on. Sugarbush Meadows. Yeah, that's, that's the, that, that's I think the, the latest name. Is that the latest Sugarbush Meadows? I don't know, whatever. So, this to me is, is both, it's nothing we can do about it today, okay, but it's something that I want in people's awareness, okay, and then I'm going to, and then the only other thing I want to say about this, I'm going to toss out one of the, you know, something else, and that is that, you know, I was thinking, well, how do you finance this? Suppose you know that it's going to be some amount undetermined, and if you, and whatever it is, you're going to need the money by August, okay? And then I say, well, you know, first of all, number one, you've got to get an agreement between us and finance and select board in terms of 
you know, we're going to have whatever it is, we're going to pay the bill because we have to. Okay, we don't have any choice. Okay, and so the question is, how do you structure it so that money is available, but only going to be spent if we all agree that, yup, it's valid expense and we got to pay the bill. So, for example, one way would be the town has got a reserve account. And the reserve account, you budget for it, it's only got ten or 15000 a year goes into it. It's just for, you know, a few sort of unexpected things, and the finance committee can just spend the money. You don't need another town meeting. Okay? And maybe we could decide, you know, we might have a liability here of up to hundred grand. And we could agree we're going to budget for the town hundred grand in the reserve account. We're going to spend it if we all agree. Okay, that's what we need. But I think, you know, so something like that could be a possibility. Another possibility is some agreement on temporary use of, let's say, school choice money that would be available with the agreement that that would get, you know, put back in through an appropriating process at a future special town meeting. Okay, these kinds of things. I mean, the, there are ways to do it, and the to me, the constant in all of them is trust, communication, respect for the different partners here, okay, which we've already got pretty good on because the last couple of budget years we've been, you know, it's, I think it's been noticed that we're, I mean, I go to their meetings now and, and they are like, you know, I'm not getting a hard time at all. They're just grateful that, yeah, we're, we're talking, okay, and so we just continue that, but I'm just saying this is coming, okay. I don't know what the answer is, but we got to be talking about it, okay? You got any, you know, thoughts of other ways to deal with it? Well, no, I mean, I think the predictability of how many students are coming out of there is difficult. And Ben and I sat down when they, when they first broke ground over there, and what we did is we tried to create a matrix out of the amount of students that are currently coming out of the other apartments and try to do a quick little math game of percentage of number of units that are in those apartments yeah. and number of students that are coming to there. because. Yeah. The one thing about these apartments is that the question is how many families will really move in because there doesn't really there's not the infrastructure around them. I say not yet. The, I asked, might be coming. There's not. Right. There's only one pizza parlor. There's one whatever. You know, it's not really. I asked them, "Are you going to have a playground?" Yeah. That wasn't the plan. Right. So I mean, so the question is, so that it is it's not the most. It may not be the most. It maybe it will be. I don't know. But it, and I know, also don't. Paper. It's very student driven. And I don't know <clears throat> what the actual rents are going to be. Right. Okay. In relation to rents in other places in town that may not be officially affordable housing, mm -hmm. but may be less lower rents. Right. I mean, the whole, that whole program is wacko. Right. Okay, but I've just, so I'm going to, you know, my own plan is, number one, to, you know, start a conversation with Selectman and Finance this fall about, you know, this is just, you know, just like this, this is coming. Yep. We're going to have to deal with it. Okay, but then also, you know, probably go stick, you know, poke my head down at the Sugarbush Meadows as, you know, they get into next spring, you know, next, with this winter, next spring, and they're starting to get people there <coughs> who are now the ones that will be the leasing agents, okay, and will be dealing with the, you know, affordable housing, uh, you know, financial rules and stuff like that, and go down and talk to them and, you know, see what we can find out. And, um, because I think we just, you know, we got to be ready. You got to be ready for something you don't know what's going to be. Okay, but I think we can deal with it mm -hmm. if we get people cooperating and working together and understanding it. And again, I, it, you know, it's gonna it's gonna cost us some money, but the school is also gonna be taking in a bunch more taxes because that place is, you know, it's a twenty five million dollar project. So yep. just because it's gotta be open and honest and you know, okay. Because yep. it also fits into another concern we have long that's going to be discussed this year is that we're running out of space. In this that's uh, absolutely. The community's slowly growing a little bit larger than that's absolutely. what we got for here, space. And plus the expansion of um, you know pre-K that wasn't in the original plans of this building and some other things that were in the original plans. So yeah, it's on our, it's on the long term. It's not a and it's, you it's like, ahead in September with, but it is on the... It is I, on the I, I was thinking it might be a good idea to get the select board and uh, uh, members of capital planning to come down here and have a little tour. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, sometime this, you know, if we could figure out sometime this fall before things got real busy, mm -hmm. just because if the space thing is coming, you know, the sooner you make sure people know about it, it's, you know, it's to your advantage. Right. And when we looked into the students um, who are at SES and living in apartments throughout town, I think the number was around 44 last year and 18 of those, or it was either 18 or 22 of those, lived at Sugarloaf Estates, and that complex has 280 units. Yeah. 
So, but still, it's like the it's, like the, it's the unknown. I don't yeah. you know. Yeah. I, just, I just thought we ought to be talking, thinking about it, and talking about it. So, mm -hmm. it was, I walked. I mean, it was a sort of sobering conversation I had with these guys, <laughs> just about the reality is you don't know how much you're going to get. And once you get it, and you don't know until it's already too late to pay for it through normal budgeting process. Okay, okay, that's it for me. You, the chair, do you have anything to report? I have nothing to report. Except we yeah, will have other stuff in executive session. You need to be collaborating after that? Exactly. So, so is it covered with that? Not yet. Right. And then, principal, please. Ben. Sure. New hires for the 2019 2020 school year uh, three instructional assistants Bessabula, Ethan Gourlay, and Mary Beth Ritchie. Ritchie. Um, our long-term pre-K sub-teacher is Caroline Joseph. Our long-term long -term district strings teacher is Katie Miranda. And our new fourth grade teacher is Carrie McGrath. Uh, building work update that took place over the summer. Um, carpentry work was done on the building siding over the summer months. This was town, part of the town's capital projects for FY20. Um, while doing the work, the contractors found there to be much more rot than initially inspected, uh, suspected, um, and that changes the scope and cost of the project. So they kind of went as far as they could, um, but there's more to be done, and so that project will need additional funding moving forward. Darius, were you? Yep. Do you find what? <laughs> yes. Did, did you have other numbers for? I don't have numbers on it. Yeah. So basically, um, so as you know, we have. Uh, Bill Hildreth, our new facilities director, is on board. This is one of the problems he's dealing with right now. Is he got to come in and figure out exactly how bad is it all the way around? And the problem was that it was covered up. You know what I mean? So they did inspections at different spots, and as they removed that, I don't know, let's look out the window and see as it goes around the band that goes around the whole building has been catching water since mm -hmm. its construction. Since its construction, so um, he's going to have to um, get new estimates on that, and we'll have to go for. I imagine we're not using we're not using current funds on that. We're going to have to go with funds for next year. So we have a little time with the estimates on it. But and then the question is, where within that rotting and stopping that rot compared to any other projects we have in the buildings, where is it fit the priority? It might be still at the top, and I assume it, might, it will be. But I want to make sure we go through the full process because we're looking at other things as well. So. We'll we'll have a. I don't know what the schedule is for submitting capital projects to the town yet. In the past, it's been like. You know, by December or early January or something like that, they were talking about trying to move it up some. I haven't heard anything yet, so we'll have it in time. And okay, you know, I got a little more experience now with the paperwork, so I got yeah. the docs, can fill them in. Okay, send it over. Okay, <coughs> great. And then with the addition of a one classroom section this year, we got to do some rearranging of rooms. Our art and music room um, is now housed in the old out of school time space. Um, we used end of year funds to add shelving cabinets and a new sink to make it art ready. And our out of school time program has now moved to the cafeteria. With the program being in the cafeteria, um, it's a similar model to what Deerfield Elementary School does right now. So part of that project was um, running wires and moving the um, uh, one of the one of the buzzers into the cafeteria space for the out of school time program, so um, folks could be left in let in after, uh, out of school time hours. Um, important dates coming up: we have a PTO meeting uh, tomorrow night. We have our first announced lockdown drill of the year this coming Thursday morning. Uh, next week, uh, week from today, is our fall walk and roll and school council meeting on September 30th. We have our open house on October 1st. Uh, October 3rd and 4th, we have our fall data meetings as an entire building. And uh, school picture day is October 10th, which is always the highlight of the fall semester here at uh, Sunderland. And that's about it. Any questions?
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Superintendent's report. All right, you should have that in front of you as well. We had a wonderful, I think, I think Ben said, we had a successful opening of all the schools, um, including the welcome back to teachers the day before school, um, and obviously with the students coming back the following day. Um, we are still in negotiations with the teachers um, group. We'll be looking at the IA's um, tentative agreement tonight. Um, and we are, as you know, we are in mediation, and so we'll have a, we have a second meeting of mediation um, on October 10th. So that's where we are there. Um, superintendent evaluation, I know you filled that out in June-ish. The chairs are meeting on the 24th to decide how they're going to do that at the joint session of the school committees in October um, to make that public. Um, we'll talk about the Safe School Committees grant. Um, I was reminded by members who attended the MASC, I know we had certainly had talked about this at the frontier level, and I don't know if it was discussed at the Sunderland level, um, but uh, really we should be having a common email address, um, a school email address for, for school committee duties, because we should be archiving all of our emails for those businesses. So um, I also contacted school council, and he just, he suggested, I know there's, in some of the, as you know, I'm dealing with multiple Committee, some committee members would, didn't really want to do that, that kind of thing. But I feel it's probably my duty or, is to create addresses and have them declined. And so therefore, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, and we also have the ability, we didn't have this five years ago or a couple years ago. They just kind of moved the uh, Windows server differently now that you can now forward a lot easier than it was before. So I'll be sending out email addresses to you how to log into them, and then there's also a link of how to create a forward. So you don't have to go, you can have it forwarded to your Yahoo account, and then uh, <coughs> just don't respond from your Yahoo account. You can say, oh, I got the, you got the packet, you got that kind of thing. There's not a lot of dialogue that happens right now in our school committee, um, via email, that's, that's the truth. Um, so it's mostly just kind of materials being sent out for meetings. Um, so um, you can get those, and if you decide to respond, that kind of thing, or do school committee business, you know, you'll log into that account there to do that. So, so I'll, I'll be shipping those out. They're all set to go. I just wanted to not send them to you before we had a meeting to discuss it. So, all right. Um, and then we'll, you know, we have the, we'll follow the archiving. Um, the last thing is the Frontier Capital Improvement Bond. Um, for those who are paying attention to the, the secondary school, they, it did finally pass um, with the, uh, the exclusion override um, in, or the exclusion vote by Deerfield at the end of June. And right now it's bond councils looking at all our documents. So there'll be stuff going on over there eventually. But like I said, I added all to one report. Great. Questions? Um, in addition to the email address, it wouldn't be crazy to have, uh, I know you have some bring your own device codes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you have some of those, with, especially bring computers or what have you. Ben, can you get the, can you do that? I don't know if your codes are different for bring your own device to this building. But if they could get the codes for um, Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, Wi -Fi. yeah, there should be a guest one that you can okay. have access that you have access to. Okay. Um, that I don't think you need a password for. Okay. But I can check on that. Okay. Yeah. The other thing is, anyway, um, I also spoke with IT, and everyone, if you're um, have trouble setting up the email account, they said just give a call. With you. They really, he didn't really mean. You'll see that in my email sending out okay. to you. So they really, Scott really does say, I'll walk you right through how to do it if it's okay. not your thing. Um, that kind of thing. So that's all I got for that one at least. Do you know if they'll need to sign in on Canvas that first that No. First see, it used to be in order to access the FRS accounts, you had to be, start from an FRS computer and create these. Now they have the ability. So these are all actually things that happen. <coughs> Having this summer, so the timing of it works out nicely. So it sounds like we're now at the point where we have to read the executive. We need to go to executive session for the two items. One is to approve ex other executive session minutes, and then um, to look at the um, settlement agreement. And I can also give you an update on uh, the current negotiation with the teachers. So, so you want a motion? Please. I move that we. We have moved to executive session pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, in order to comply with the open meeting law for the purpose 
of the approval of executive session minutes of January 15, 2019, April 4, 2019, May 21, 2019, and June 18, 2019, and also pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, Union 38 teachers, and instructional assistants. Just teachers, right? No, we're going to discuss both. Oh, we're discussing, yeah. the, the we're discussing the, both. We, we will return to. And then my understanding is we will return to open session, open session with the possibility of a vote on the. Um, the only remaining business would be the possibility of a vote on the IA uh, contract. Yep. yep. And then to adjourn. Second. All second. second. Outstanding. Uh, I guess we have to do a roll call. Yep. Yes. Maisie, Keith. Yes. Greg, Keith. yes. Peter. Yes. Jessica. Yes. All right. So that's it. There we go. You're on. So out of executive session, and uh, I guess we have uh, we have a motion with regard to the IA negotiations, settlement contract. And the motion needs to be to. Authorize the chair to sign a contract, I believe. Is that? Well, I've got to go off whatever's written, written there. I would say to accept and then to then authorize. Okay, so move that the move that we accept the settlement agreement between the Sunderland School Committee and Union Thirty Eight Instructional Assistance Association for two thousand nineteen to twenty two contract years and. Uh, authorize the chair to sign the contract. I'll second. Yeah, we can understand. All right, any discussion? Everybody, we have the official discussion. Uh, in favor? Unanimous. All right. And I believe that's it. Move to adjourn. That's it. All right. Keith Move moves to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Yay. Yeah. All right.